Welcome back to Rod Reacts. Hopefully you're having a good uh, day. My day is going pretty good to myself. I always stay positive, but for now we're going to check out 25 amazing scientific reasons behind Indian tradition and culture. Hindus, Hinduism facts. Just yesterday I uh, reacted to a video, what is Hinduism? So if you haven't watched it, go check it out. But I was learning a lot. I didn't realize how vast it is and how many levels to it is. And um, it just amazes me, so there's a lot to learn. So I was recommended this video to check it out and uh, see what it's about. So that's what I'm about to do. So uh, let's react with it together. Let's do this. like that. Namaste, the traditional Indian greeting, a gesture which marks respect, reverence and love for the person we greet. I like that. So why do we greet people in this way? In yoga, this gesture is called the Anjali Mudra. Anjali Mudra. It is a well-known fact that the tips of the fingers are major energy points. When we bring together the palms of our fingers, linking the tips of our fingers, then the nerve circuits of the brain are linked to those of the upper body. I didn't know that. A feeling of calmness and well-being immediately descends. You know what? Now that I do that, I kind of do feel that. I'm being sincere and honest. Like, there's something about that. That's weird. Also, in yoga, each finger is representative of a certain energy. I didn't know that. The little finger represents tamas or dullness. The ring finger represents rajas or activity. Okay. The middle finger represents sattva or refinement. The index finger is the individual soul or jivatma. Ooh. And the thumb is the paramatma or the ultimate soul. Wow. These are the reasons behind namaste, the traditional Indian greeting. Very interesting. I never knew. Why do temples have bells? Agamartan to Devanam, Gamanartan to Rakshasam, Kurve Gantarvam Tatra, Devadahuana Lakshanam. I start my worship ringing the bell, praying that the divine may enter me and all demonic forces within and without depart. Traditional like Indian prayer. worship always started with the ringing of the bell. The temple bell was a beautifully crafted object made of an amalgam of several metals including zinc, copper, bronze, cadmium and many other alloys. The quantity of each metal was based on very accurate scientific calculation. When the bell was rung, there was a resonation which created an immediate harmony between the right and left lobes of the brain. The echo lasted seven seconds, touching the seven chakras of the body. Chakras? The sound of the bell created an instant calm, increasing the powers of concentration, helping you to focus on the higher. A well-designed temple bell could also produce the sound Om. Om? What's Om? Why do we visit temples? Think India and the thought that comes to mind are pictures of the majestic temples of the land. These temples were not just immensely beautiful architectural wonders, they were also places of immense spiritual strength. Absolutely. Scientific analysis has today proven that these temples were built over areas of maximum positive energy. The Mulastana or Gatpragraha was built at the spot where energy was maximum. The idol was placed and the Gatpragraha built around it. Oh, I'm just curious of how, you know, these temples were built a long, long time ago. How, how did um, they know where this energy was, like the maximum energy in these places in India? How? It just amazes me. This point indicated the place of maximum positive energy. Placed below the idols were copper plates with Vedic inscriptions capable of absorbing and radiating energy. When a person visited the temple and walked around the Parikrama, they came within the radius of this magnetic field 
thereby imbibing a lot of positive energy. The result was that the visit to the temple rejuvenated him, body, mind and soul. I need to go to these temples. I can be rejuvenated. Why do we worship idols? Ancient Indian scriptures were texts of religion and spirituality. The Upanishads were texts of immense spiritual strength based on authentic scientific facts. India had a long history of idol worship. Yeah. The cognitive power of the mind comes from symbols. For example, when we hold a coin in the hand, we are aware of money power. Right. Money power itself is intangible. Our ancestors understood that it was difficult for a simple mind to comprehend abstract truths. Idol worship was the answer. When an idol is placed before a devotee, it helps him to focus instantaneously, increasing concentration and thus enabling him to move easily to his higher selves and realms beyond. Never thought of it like that. The devotee was free to choose idols according to his inclination and likes. This enables instant concentration and easy movement to higher realms. Idol worship was then an answer to help devotees understand abstract truths easily. So it's for concentration, give or take. Why is it that traditionally Indians wore silk clothes while offering puja? Silk had the capacity to attract and absorb electromagnetic energy. The constant friction between the cloth and the body created an electromagnetic attraction. So in Hinduism, it has a lot to do with energy, but not just energy. Um, Positive energy, positive energy, staying calm, staying clear, staying positive, and soaking in the energy. When the devotee did puja, wearing silk clothes, there was an instant absorption of the energy created, which was then transmitted to the devotee, creating a feeling of instant calm. The silk also prevented loss of that energy, thereby leading to increased concentration. This was the reason why devotees all over India, whether the Maharashtrians for Ganesh Puja, the Bengalis for Durga Puja, or the Gujaratis for Lakshmi Puja, prefer to do worship wearing silk clothes. Okay, I can see that. Why do Indian married women apply Sindor, Sindor on the forehead? I always wondered Why that. do married women apply Sindor? The sindoor was applied not just to indicate a married woman. Okay. The sindoor was made of a mixture of lime, turmeric and mercury. mercury. Mercury helped to decrease the blood pressure and also enhance the sexual drive. Here, here mercury is poisonous, they say. Hence, widows were not allowed to use sindoor. Mercury also helped to bring down feelings of stress and strain. For best results, Confused. Sindur was used all the way from the forehead right down to the pituitary glands, the seat of all thoughts and emotions. Why do they wear bangles? Think of Indian women and images of beautiful bangles in different hues and colors immediately flash before the mind. Yeah. So why did Indian women traditionally wear bangles? It is said that the tinkle of a bangle in a house kept the negative at bay. Ancient Ayurveda stated that the bones of the women were weaker than those of men. It's true. Bangles were traditionally made of gold and silver. These metals helped to absorb energy which was then transmitted to the body, improving physiological functioning. I'm telling you, everything has to do with energy in Hinduism, it looks like to me. Correct me if I'm wrong, but keep the negative out and hold on to the positive. And um, that's, that's logical to me. Also, the pulse which was felt at the wrist area was used to diagnose several major ailments. The constant friction 
between the bangles and the wrist area ensured good blood circulation. Again, the energy which was released by the skin was absorbed by the metals in the bangle and returned to the body. So, now we know that bangles were not just mere ornaments but also served a very good scientific reason. Why do we apply henna on hands and feet? Hina. When we talk of Indian marriages, we immediately think of the Mehendi ceremony. Beautiful henna drawn on intricate patterns on the hands and feet of the bride. Why do we apply henna apart from the fact that it looks beautiful? There is a very scientific reason behind this. I don't know. Applying henna cools the body and brings down fever and headaches. Okay. Traditional Hindu marriages are long drawn out affairs. They create a lot of stress and sometimes fever. Applying henna on the hands and feet brings down fever and reduces tension, cooling the body. Okay. Henna is also an important antiviral and antifungal agent. It helps to keep rashes down and brings down fevers and other ailments. I'm down with that. Keeping keeping healthy. Toe rings. Traditionally, Indian women wore toe rings. Toe rings were worn not just to indicate the marital status of the woman. There was a scientific reason behind wearing toe rings. Toe rings were made of silver and worn on the second toe. It is a well-known fact that there is a nerve which starts from this toe, goes to the uterus and then to the heart. Oh, wow, I didn't By know that. By wearing toe rings, good circulation was ensured thereby strengthening the uterus. The menstrual cycle was also regulated, ensuring speedy conception. Also, silver is known to be a good conductor. Silver absorbs the energy from the earth and passes it on to the body, thereby rejuvenating the entire system. These are the scientific reasons behind wearing the touring. All right, so if you're having trouble having children um, here in the United States, if you're watching this, and you're a lady, get you a toe ring and put it on the second toe and maybe it'll help. Um, fascinating. Kum kum, kum kum. Indian women traditionally wore kum kum. Kum kum was applied on the forehead between the eyebrows. Today, it is scientifically proven that this is a major nerve point. Oh, I bet so. The rishis of ancient India understood this to be the seat of the Anya Chakra, the center of infinite intuition. By wearing kumkum on the midbrow area, the power of intuition was increased. The center of intuition was opened up and increased concentration. It also helped to increase blood supply to the facial muscles. By applying kumkum on the midbrow areas, the Anya Chakra was automatically activated. Why is turmeric considered holy in India and what is its uses? Turmeric, turmeric is an important turmeric. part of all Indian cuisine. Turmeric is well known for its anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties. So what about health? All curry powder in India contains turmeric. It is also considered holy and is a part of all auspicious occasions worth its weight in gold like the color of the spice. Wow. Turmeric is an important anti-inflammatory agent. In combination with other antioxidants, it helps to contain inflammation. Turmeric has been widely used in traditional Indian medicine through the centuries. Today, Turmeric finds an important place in conventional medicine and helps to cure diseases like cancer, Alzheimer's, diabetes, and arthritis. I need to add some turmeric to my diet, for sure. Why do they pierce their ears? Indian women traditionally wore earrings. Ayurveda stated that by piercing the ears and wearing earrings, Several diseases like hernia could be controlled. It also helped to regulate the menstrual cycle and restrict hysteria. 
the electric current within the body was also regulated by wearing earrings. Indian physicians and philosophers believed that by piercing the ears and wearing earrings, the power of the intellect, the thinking faculties and the power of decision making would increase. It also helped to contain incessant chatter, a process which would drain the body of all its energy, making sure that the person was calmer and maintained a certain dignity and decorum. Problems associated with the ear channels could also be curtailed by wearing earrings. I love like everything she speaks of is about keeping your body healthy, improves your mental, mental psych, um, keeps a positive energy around you. Um, you know, those, those are all real positive things and I can't disagree. If you can do those things to help your body, you should do them. I had no idea that all this was in uh, Hinduism. Pronunciation of Om. Scientific reasons and uses. That's so calming. The chanting of Om helps the mind calm down, thoughts recede, and there is an instant feeling of peace and calm. Om is considered the primordial sound of the universe, the first sound. Wow. This universal Didn't sound is a combination of three syllables, A, U, and Ma. A, um, Ma. When we pronounce um, Om, uh, as we say A, the lower portions of the body, up to the stomach, are uh, activated. As we say U, uh, the chest area is activated. With Ma, the face uh, and the brain gets activated. The proper pronunciation of Om ensures good intake of oxygen required for a good body and mind. Mystics say that Om is like the clapping of one hand. That is common. Chanting Om ensures peace and quiet which relaxes the body and the mind. Wow. In Indian culture, Tulsi is accorded the status of mother. Tulsi is also called holy or sacred basil. The spiritual and medicinal properties of Tulsi are renowned the world over. Tulsi is an important adaptogenic herb which helps to reduce stress. Tulsi is a remarkable antibiotic. Its medicinal properties are renowned. It helps to cure several ailments including the common cold. Really? Containing no caffeine or other stimulants, Tulsi helps to increase physical endurance. Miracle Taking plant. a Tulsi every day helps to maintain the physiological balance in the body and increases immunity. More important, Tulsi increases your lifespan. Keeping a Tulsi plant at home keeps insects and mosquitoes away. I need some of these it plants. is said that even snakes are kept at bay. In India, every traditional household from time immemorial to this day has a Tulsi plant for both its spiritual and medicinal significance. That's a wonder plant if I ever heard one. Why do we worship the pea pal tree? Certain trees were venerated in India. Most important among them was the peepal tree. People. The peepal tree neither had tasty food nor strong wood. So why then was this tree considered so important? Right. Why? The peepal tree was capable of generating oxygen 24 hours a day. Wow. Our ancestors knew that the peepal tree generated oxygen day and night making it vital to maintain the ecological balance. We need to plant more of those. By associating this tree with the divine, our ancestors made sure that it was never cut or damaged in any way. Some trees are considered sacred in India. Why? Certain trees were considered sacred in India. The name, the Odhambar and the people tree are some of them. These trees are propagated by seeds dropped by birds. The Aldumba tree is associated with Lord Dattatreya. Lord Dattatreya. So what makes these trees so important? 
all these trees had the capacity to generate oxygen through the day. Our ancestors, understanding that these trees were important to maintain ecological balance, ensured that they were never cut or destroyed in any way by associating them with the divine. Now we need to plant more of those babies. Why do we sit on the floor and eat? In traditional India, people ate their meals seated cross-legged on the floor. What were the benefits of eating meals seated in this posture? I don't know, tell me. By sitting in Sukhasana, <coughs> as this posture was called, the body relaxed, making the body ready Digest. for the digestive process. Yeah. Also, the constant movement of bending forward and straightening up made sure that digestive juices were released, enhancing speedy digestion. While sitting and getting up, joints were made more flexible removing ailments like arthritis. So, there were several benefits to eating your meals in the traditional way, seated in Sukhasana. Sukhasana. Why do we start with spice and end with sweet? Our ancestors stressed the fact that every meal should start with spicy foods and end with the sweets. What was the scientific rationale behind this theory? I don't know. It is well known that when we take spicy foods, the body secretes digestive juices and acids which enhance the digestive process. Sweets contain a lot of carbohydrates which make for sluggish digestion. Also, the intake of sugar enhances the absorption of amino acids tryptophan. Tryptophan increases the levels of serotonin, a neurotransmitter associated with the feelings of well-being. That is the feeling that we experience at the end of a full meal. This was the rationale behind our ancestors stressing that every meal should start with spicy foods and end with sweets. This all makes sense to me though because, you know, India has been around one of the oldest civilizations there ever was. Thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years and they know they knew even back then a lot of uh, medical stuff and they've incorporated it greatly. Like I had no idea that in Hinduism there was this much, had this much to do with health. It's just mind blowing. Why do we fast? Fasting is one of the important tenets of Ayurveda. Ayurveda is based on the premise that most ailments stem from the fact that there are toxic materials retained in the body. By fasting, we help to cleanse the system and regulate body functioning. A complete fasting is good for health with occasional sips of lime juice. Lime juice. The body contains 80% liquid and 20% solid, just like the earth. The gravitational force of the moon sometimes creates disturbances in the body. Fasting helps to cut down the intake of acids, thus regulating stress and hysteria. Modern research shows that fasting helps to correct several ailments including Alzheimer's, cancer wow. and diabetes. There is a popular misconception that by fasting we become weak. On the contrary, by well, fasting heard. the system is cleansed and physiological balance is maintained. A day of fasting helps the digestive system and helps the proper functioning of several organs like the liver, kidney, pancreas, etc. Wow. Why do Brahmins grow choti on their head? The human body has seven chakras, starting with the base chakra or the muladhara and ending with the highest chakra or the sahasrara or sahasradala. The Sahasradala is also defined as the thousand petaled lotus. The Kundalini, energy that lies coiled like a serpent at the base chakra, can be made to rise through yogic exercises right up to the Sahasradala. The enlightened master, his one, who through his spiritual practices raises the Kundalini from the Muladhara to the Sahasradala, past the Shikha. Hmm. Shushrut, the surgeon of Ayurveda, Describe this spot as the Adipati Marma. In the brain, this spot coincides with the Brahma Randra, the point where the Sushumna arrives from the lower part of the body. The Shikha, 
covers this spot, protects it, and preserves the energy, also called ojas. This is deep. That was deep. I need to listen to that again. Why do we touch the feet of elders? In Indian culture, it is customary to bend down and touch the feet of elders as greeting. It is said that by doing this, you acquire intellect, knowledge, strength and fame. There is a scientific reason behind this analysis. The body is a storehouse of energy, negative and positive. The left side represents negative energy, the right, the positive energy. When we bend down and touch the feet of our elders, it indicates that we are surrendering our ego at their feet. This gives rise to karuna or compassion within them. As we touch their feet, this energy is passed That's on to us, energy. thus also creating an instant liking between two hearts and minds. The nerves from the brain are spread out through the body and when we touch another person, it forms a circuit, thereby transmitting energy from one person to the other. We become the receiver and the other person is the giver of energy. We sleep with our heads towards the north, we invite evil spirits and ghosts. Oh no. A myth. But there was a scientific I reason every to why we should not sleep with our heads towards the north. I do that every night. It is well known that the earth has a magnetic field. It is also known that the body has a magnetic field of its own. When we sleep with our heads towards the south, then the unlike poles of the earth and the body attract each other. We wake up in the morning with a sense of well-being, of having slept well and rested. Similarly, when we sleep with our heads towards the east, the energy of the sun enters the body through the head and leaves through the feet, leaving you with a cool head and warm feet. When we sleep with our heads towards the west, Opposite. the reverse happens, leaving you with a warm head and cool feet, an unpleasant sensation. Also, when we sleep with our heads towards the north, the iron in our body tends to coagulate in the brain creating disturbances, headaches, and unpleasantness. Wow. I need to change this my causes sleeping. a lot of disorders, including Alzheimer's, cognitive disorders, Parkinson's, and several other neurological problems. This was the reason why our forefathers insisted that we sleep with our heads towards the south or the east. Mind blown. Mind blown. <laughs> why do we shout in anger? A saint and his disciples were walking along the bank of the Ganges one day. They came upon two people shouting angrily at each other. The sage decided that this was as good a time as any to teach his disciples a valuable lesson for life. Why do people shout at each other when they are angry? asked the sage. Because they lose their calm, said right. one disciple. Well, they, we do. Several explanations were offered, but none of them were satisfactory. The sage then explained, When people are angry, their hearts grow far from each other. That's true. They have to shout to be heard. When wow. people love each other, their hearts are close to each other. They speak softly and can be heard. They need not speak at all. Their eyes can communicate their feelings. When you are angry, said the sage, don't let your hearts grow too far apart, or it may not be possible to come back. Oh, that was like the deepest thing she has said the entire video, and it's logical. It's logical when you get mad, you're 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 not close, so you you yell, you scream. Wow. <laughs> oh, I believe in that one. Throwing coins into the well brought good luck. What was the scientific reason behind this custom? Tanks, ponds, rivers were the ancient water bodies. Also, coins in traditional India were made of copper, unlike the steel ones that we use today. Right. One of the properties of copper was that when it was thrown into the water, it helped the dust particles to settle to the bottom thereby Purifying making water. drinking water available on top. Purifying. Copper was also an important element needed for the body. 
by bringing in this custom, our ancestors assured that there was a daily intake of copper. Punishment method, uh-oh. Remember the traditional punishment where you crossed your hands across your chest, Never did that. held alternate earlobes and sat down and got up as many times as the master demanded? This was a punishment that was in vogue from the days of the Gurukulam. But there was also a scientific rationale behind this punishment. As you sat down and got up several times, blood circulation was improved, stimulating better concentration and memory power. Remember not to By crossing it. the hands across your chest and holding alternate lobes, there was fine coordination between the right and left sides of the brain. By pressurizing the points on the ear lobes, brain cells were stimulated, thus decreasing learning disabilities in weak students. My name is Scott Harris. That was an amazing video. I learned so much. Um, like I said before, I didn't realize every, basically everything that were done in those traditions, they did it for their health. They did it for their health, either health or positive energy, which positive energy helps your health. Um, absolutely amazing. But the, the, why we yell, the why we yell explanation blew my mind. It makes just so much sense. It's crazy. But I need to incorporate some of these things in my life. Um, and see if I can get a little bit healthier because we all could get a little bit healthier, right? Um, mind blown, mind blown. This video absolutely mind blown me. Anyway, if you have any other uh, videos you want me to react to, comment down below and let me know. For now, peace.